Hello and welcome to our evening service from St Matthew and St Luke's in Darlington. My name is Gordon and I am training for ordination with Lindisfarne College of Theology. Wherever you are joining us from, a very, very warm welcome to you indeed. This is a special service, um, not just because it is Easter Day, but because um, I'm not actually in the country when I'm recording this. I'm recording this on Good Friday and I am um, in a place in Poland called Oswiecie, um, which many of you will know by another name, the name of Auschwitz. Um, I've been here all week and I fly back to the UK tomorrow, so hopefully I will be in church on Easter Sunday morning. Um, so our service today is going to be focused on a bit of what I've been doing um, last week as well as celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. If this is the first time that you've joined us, don't worry. Everything that you need for the service will be on the screen for you. There'll be prayers, there will be um, Bible readings, there'll be songs for you to sing along with as well. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by singing together. Um, so here we go. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia! Bright burning sun with golden beam, soft shining moon with silver gleam. As you can see there, the words are on the screen for you. Sorry about that, my computers are being a bit erratic. We, we, we press on. Um, as you can see there, the words are on the screen for you. We say the words that are in bold together. 
O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. So as we come to the end of another day, another week, we bring our days and our weeks to God and recognise his presence with us now. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices, so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid.
This week has been a difficult week for me. I think if we're being honest as a college, it's been a difficult week for all of us. Auschwitz is, I don't want to say it's beyond description because that would be a lie, but it's somewhere you need to come to. It's somewhere you need to experience to even begin to understand the horror of what went on there. And the picture there is the famous railway lines going into under that guard tower at Auschwitz II, Auschwitz-Birkenau, which was the death camp. And you don't realise how big the place is until you go. You can read that it is a big site and it is this many metres long by this many metres wide and there is this many metres of railway track. But it's not until you stand in the middle of it and you can't see the edge. It's not until you stand in the middle of the ramp where people were unloaded from the cattle cars that you realise how many people came in at once. It's not until you actually see one of the cattle cars parked up on its own that you realise how cramped the conditions were for people as they were sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau. And it's also not until you go there that you realise how straight all the roads are, all the adjoining paths are. Someone very deliberately sat down with a piece of paper and a pencil and a ruler and a set square and deliberately designed the camp how it is. Someone deliberately sat down and designed a camp to be as efficient, as industrial as they could be in killing other people. with often 2,000 people in one gas chamber alone. That is the horror that we have been grappling with this week. But the Auschwitz was only one camp. As well as Auschwitz-Birkenau, there is Auschwitz I, the original concentration camp which held its first prisoners who actually who were Polish in 1939. That is the site of that famous gate with that sadistically cruel motto above it, Arbeit Mac Fry. That is a camp that is just over the road from where I am staying. Even today when you walk around it, there is a sense of dread about that place. This week has been hard. This week has been hard, not just physically, and intellectually, but emotionally as well. Today on Good Friday morning, we went back to Auschwitz-Birkenau for the second time. And there we had an also familiar Good Friday ritual. We walked the Stations of the Cross remembering the death of Jesus 
on that cross on Good Friday. But we also remembered the deaths of those who were caught up in the Holocaust, who were killed because they were Polish, who were killed because they were Roma or Sinti um, gypsies, who were killed because they were gay, who were killed because they were mentally or physically disabled, who were killed because they were old, who were killed because they were children. Walking those stations of the cross felt like an emotional kick to the stomach. And yet it was a privilege to do that. I don't think I will ever be able to do anything again like that in my life. That act of remembrance but also that act of defiance, because rem remembering them all as best we can is an act of defiance. The Nazis' plan was to wipe them from the face of the earth, to leave no trace of them whatsoever. And so yes, Auschwitz is this memorial to the greatest evil of humanity, an evil we have repeated so often since, but it's also a monument to folly and to failure. Jewish people are still here, Polish, Roma and Sinti people are still here, LGBTQI people are still here. Those who are neurodiverse and those who are disabled are still here. They stand tall, they stand proud. And we should stand alongside them. Standing alongside them. Showing their human dignity. Celebrating their glorious beauty. This is not going to be a traditional Easter day talk where we celebrate and glory in the resurrection of Jesus. Because for a lot of us, we find that the pain of everyday life is all consuming. And yes, we do celebrate the glorious resurrection of Jesus from the dead conquering death, conquering sin, setting us free, free to live as one with God, but also free to live as one with one another. Today we celebrate our common humanity. Today we celebrate the beauty of the human race. Today we stand united against hatred and division. We remember them. We mourn their loss. But we look on with hope. Hope for the future of humanity hope of love. Amen.
that we come to our time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have promised to hear us when we pray to you in faith. On this day of resurrection, we give thanks for the church throughout the world. We give thanks for all those who lead churches, for all those whose contributions build up the church, however small their contribution may be. We pray that the church may be a beacon of light and hope in darkness, a place where the fire of Easter burns brightly, a place of welcome for those despised by society, a place of hope, a place of love for all. We pray for our world, for those places of the world where darkness and evil are still rife. We pray for refugees and asylum seekers. We pray for an end to the stigma which surrounds them. We pray for all those who are regarded as being other. We pray for all those who work to support them. We pray for agencies of relief. Here in Darlington, we pray for Darlington Assistance for Refugees. We pray for those who we know who are in need. We pray for those who are ill at home or in hospital. We pray for all who care for them. We give thanks for our NHS, for doctors and nurses, paramedics and physiotherapists, We pray for those who keep our hospitals clean, for porters and for administration staff. Tonight we are asked to pray for Sam, a young boy who has been diagnosed with a brain tumour. And we pray for those who have died this week, for those who mourn their passing. We pray for all who will comfort them in their grief. And I leave a space for you to offer your own prayers to God. If you wish, you may want to type them in the comments below. Finally, we pray for ourselves. We pray that wherever we are, whoever we are with, we may be agents of God's love, God's grace. God's forgiveness. That we may celebrate and glory in the beauty and the dignity of those for whom we are with.
God of glory. By the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open, in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. And some words by Primo Levi, who was held here at Auschwitz. He was, um, he is recounting how he was helped by a fellow um, prisoner here. So he, he he was he wasn't helped by he was helped um, by someone he, who would give him clothing they helped give him food they helped send letters home to Italy and then helped get letters back from Italy um, and he writes this I am deeply believed it's thanks to him I am still alive today and not just because of his material help but also thanks to his presence his simple and delicate way of showing his goodness. He reminded me that outside of our world there is someone pure and untouched, not corrupted or feral, unfamiliar with hatred and fear. There is something incredibly hard to define, some elusive power of goodness which is worth living for. Thanks to him, I didn't forget I am also a human being. So I hope you have found our service this evening um, useful. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if you have um, and you're watching this on Facebook, please do give this video a like. Please also do subscribe, um, like our page, follow our page to be kept up to date with everything that's happening here at St Matthew and St Luke's. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do like this video. Please do leave us a comment. Also leave us a comment on Facebook, um, but also on YouTube. Please do subscribe to our channel and click on that bell icon to be notified whenever we post a new video. If you are able to, if you wish to, um, please do consider donating to fund the work of our church. There is a link in the service description to our online giving page. Um, online giving is quick, it is easy, it is secure. You can give as much or as little as you wish. And every penny that we get um, for from online giving is used to fund the work of our church here in Darlington. After this week, after this service, um, I'm going to be stepping back from doing online services. I'll still do a couple, but you're going to see a lot more of people like David, who is our curate. Um, I'm stepping back because um, in October, November time, um, I will be off through another parish for a six month placement. And so we're starting to wind back what I do here at St. Matthew and St. Luke's so that other people have chance to grow into roles and so the work does continue. Um, thank you to everyone um, who has been with us. Um, I've been doing these services every week since the very first lockdown. Um, thank you to everyone um, who's helped put services together um, and hopefully they will grow and develop and get even better. Um, I hope that you have a good Easter I hope that you have a good week. I hope you have a safe week and that you'll be able to join us again soon.
leads us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness, hymns of triumph sing. For the Lord now liveth, death hath lost its sting. Thine be the glory. Sun. And as is 